Hello and welcome. My name is Alexis. I'm also known as Miss Trenchcoat all across the internet. I'm an online entrepreneur who helps overwhelmed women manage their time, energy, and expectations so they can get all of their big plans and thoughts and dreams and desires and ideas out of their head and onto paper so they can get down to business creating their dream life. If that is you, you are in the right place today because that is what we're going to be talking about today. So let's talk about some common misconceptions about content marketing because I hear a lot of things that are just not true about content marketing that people have these preconceived notions in their heads. So five misconceptions about content marketing. It's hard and or time consuming to create content. You have to be everywhere, right? You have to have all the platforms. You have to be posting all the time, right? That's number three. You have to be posting all the time. I have to post all the time, multiple times a day, multiple times a week. You need to have the best quality. If you're not the best quality, no one's paying attention to you. It's too late to start a blog or a YouTube or an Instagram or a podcast or a Facebook and be uh, successful right now, right? It's too late. Time is over. Time has passed, right? I want you to give me an amen or drop like an icon or something, like an emoji in chat right now. If you, any of these resonate with you, if you want to share which one resonates with you that you is a preconceived notion that you have about content marketing, I would love to hear it. So leave me a comment and let me know. But we're going to start crushing these misconceptions because these are so wrong. It's like wrong, 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 wrong. (laughs) Let's talk about number one, that it's hard and time consuming to create content. So let's be honest here. I earn more now than I did at my nine to five and I work far less, right? I already told you I work like four hours a week, a day, sorry. I use an editorial calendar to manage my content marketing, which keeps me organized and on track and I bulk my work. So what you see as daily content on my platforms is realistically more like four to six hours of work per week, four to six hours of work per week. And I'm creating content every day across my platforms. Isn't that interesting? Just four to six hours of work in a week. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, is it really time consuming and hard? Mm. Um, no, it's not. Okay. So you have to be everywhere. That's misconception number two. So I teach my students to pick three platforms to start with maximum when they're getting started with, with, uh, with online content. So at least one of those platforms should be your own, something that you control, like a self-hosted website or blog or an email list. And then one at least should be a social network like Instagram, Facebook, um, et cetera, right? Because this is the thing. There are platforms that you can control. Like I can control my email list. I can control my blog, my site, my websites, things like that. But I can't control YouTube. If YouTube decided to close down right now, I have no control over it. If YouTube was just like, oh, we don't like Alexis's live class right now, cancel, right? Like they have control. I don't have control. Now, hopefully I trust that nothing's going to happen. Obviously, that's what happens. And hopefully these things are going to be around for years and years and years. But that's why you want one of each at least. Um, But you need to choose the platforms that you're going to use based on what you enjoy using and what communication method suits your skill set, like writing, video, audio, or photography. If you love taking pictures, then you should use like Instagram. If you love writing, you should probably have a blog of some sort. It doesn't necessarily even have to be um, your own self-hosted website, even though that's what I recommend. It could be a free blog. It could be like one of those, what's that? other one that everyone talks about now, medium. It could be an email list because that's another way that you could write, right? Like you pick what works for you based on your interest and skill set and what you're good at. Misconception number three is that you have to post all the time. So you actually teach your audience what to expect from your content. So I think that posting at least one time a week per platform is probably a best practice, but it's up to you to determine that schedule. Consistency ultimately is key. Once you decide your frequency, you should stick to it and stay on schedule as much as possible. But if every once in a while you miss a post like on your blog or on Instagram because something happened, right? It's not the end of the world. Just try to aim for consistency, right? Would we, we would all be so annoyed if like our new favorite show that came out, like it was like, okay, Mondays at 8 p.m., right? And then all of a sudden they just like went, they just went away. They're like, oh, sorry, we couldn't get our stuff together. We couldn't get our shit together. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And we're skipping this week. You know what I mean? You'd be like, oh, so sad. And then like, what if they just started posting a different day? You're like, wait a minute. I thought Monday was the day, right? It's just a best practice to post once a week. It's just a best practice to, you know, post on a consistent schedule as much as possible so people can like learn your schedule and start anticipating. And then when, you know, I post my videos every Saturday at, um, what is it, like eight or nine o'clock, something like that. Um, And so people can like say, oh, every morning and Saturday morning, I go check Instagram and see what Alexis' latest video is. And that therefore, you know, I might have more people who view the video when it first launches because they're excited about it, right? But You decide what that schedule is going to be. You teach your audience what to expect, right? But consistency is very important. 
Misconception number four is that you need to have the best quality. So quality does make a difference to some extent. It does. It does make a, a the, it does make a difference, right? But I will say that it's much easier now in 2020 to get higher quality results because most of us have a smartphone with HD video, audio, and photography capabilities, right? So again, you're watching this on a computer, which is probably a modern computer, or you're watching this on a phone or a tablet that's probably like a modern piece of technology. My iPhone, which is even, I have like an eight plus, what, I'm like 10 years behind on my iPhone right now. I'm <laughs> like, eight, like I haven't really have had so many more iPhones, but I still have great quality from this device and it films HD video. I can take audio and it sounds great, um, you know, and I can take pictures that look good and there's like apps that you can get that are free or very inexpensive on your phone to edit things. You know, like it's so easy now, like it's easy to get good quality now. It's amazing. And actually what's going on now, I think, is that lots of platforms are now prioritizing quantity over quality. So being perfect isn't a factor to success. If you're someone who watches Instagram stories or TikTok or like Snapchat, you know this firsthand, right? The the content on like live Instagrams, right, is a lower quality because someone's filming it on their phone and it's streaming. So it's never going to be able to be like 4K HD, not as of September 2020 when I'm making this video, right? So the quality actually has gone down on some of these platforms for certain aspects of them. And people are still doing phenomenal, right? You have already in your pocket, in your hands, the amount of quality you need to make things work for you and to make content stand out for you. So not not an excuse anymore, people, okay? (laughs) A misconception number five is that it's too late to start. So it's probably actually easier now to get started, especially with the social platforms. It's much easier to go viral, find success, grow an audience because there's just more people using the platform than ever before. Like when I started on Instagram, yes, it was popular, but what was that? 2000, so many years ago. It was like at least 2012 or 2013 when I started on Instagram. Back when Instagram wasn't even really like you posted photos. It was just like, do you guys remember when Instagram started? It was literally just a filters app. So you would, I would go into Instagram and like, I didn't post things on my feed for a long time, even though I had an Instagram, you would just go in and use like the lo-fi filter or whatever it was, and then, you know, save it. And then you'd post it somewhere else, right? Or I would go in and I would post it to my blog, right? I would just use it as a filter app um, before it was really, you know, Instagram was originally just a photo app, right? It was not always a, uh, like a feed sharing sort of thing. So Now with so many more people, right, and so many different businesses online, your audience is now online in these social platforms. So if you're putting out consistent content, you're going to get a following. Like it's just going to happen at this point as long as you're you're following best practices, which again, all that information, information I can share and teach with you about how to, you know, really make content that makes an impact, grows your community, et cetera. So the way has has been paved with all of the most popular platforms. So the blueprint for success is there if you're willing to learn it and do the work and show up, right? So it's not too late. You guys, it's so funny. I started my YouTube in 2009 and I remember when I started this, I'm like, I'm going to do this because I want to do it and it's going to be fun, but it's too late for me to get a big following. Like it's already been there, done that. Like the most popular people are already established. Like I thought that in 2009, okay? So it's just never... That feeling will never go away, I think. I think we just have to use logic, right? As long as people are using the platform, it's a platform place for you to grow. This is why we don't put all our eggs in one basket. This is why we also like to have the best practice of having our own controlled platforms as well. So that if something happens to Instagram, if something happens to Facebook, if something happens to YouTube, which nothing's going to happen to them in the next few years, promise, um, because they're investing so much in making sure that they stay around for a long time. But, you know, if something were to happen, that's why you have your own self hosted website. That's why you have your own email list, et cetera. Like you have something of your own as well. So that if Instagram closed tomorrow, if YouTube closed tomorrow, I still have a following elsewhere. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with any business besties of yours, people that you know want this information. Feel free to share it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel, follow me on Instagram, take advantage of the offer, follow me on all the places, and I'll see you guys later, okay? Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I love you. You're beautiful and you're charmed. Goodbye.